The title of my sermon is The Aliens Are Here. I began to think about that, you know. I was, in my, I was preaching a revival in Bastrop, Louisiana, and the Lord began to deal with me. And the way I write my sermons, I don't know how other ministers do it, but I, I, just, I write my sermons by thought. I get thoughts in my mind, or if I'm driving down the road, or if I'm flying in a plane, and I see somebody doing something, I, I begin to, uh, the Lord, I begin to I meditate on the Lord, and because God used very specific and simple things. He said there once was a sower. He evidently saw somebody sowing seed, or different things like that. And Jesus always put things in the everyday, always in the now, to where people, you know, could identify what he was saying. So that's why he used parables to understand, you know, like there was a rich man, or there was a, a poor man, something of that nature. I begin to think about it. I begin to think about it as a kid, as I was growing up, how everybody in the community that did not come to our church, they thought we was crazy. I used to hear people say, them Pentecostal people are crazy. Don't go around them Pentecostal people because you'll, you'll go insane. I've heard people say that when I was a kid growing up. In fact, I got a preacher friend of mine. He didn't know what Pentecost was, but the, the name of that church was the Glory Barn. And he used, mama used to give him a nickel to go to the show every Saturday night. He'd save his nickel and he'd go to the glory barn and watch the show. <laughs> he said, man, they had more action in that church than they ever did in that theater. His name is Reverend Jimmy Hester from Arlington Christian Center. He's one of the greatest uh, ministers across the country and across the world. And uh, I've noticed that and I begin to think about that as, as I was meditating in my room. I had just flew in and everything. And, and I begin to think about that. And the Lord gave me the title of a, of a sermon. The aliens are here. Hebrews chapter 11. We're going to start reading with verse 8. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 8. And I'm going to try to explain tonight why some people think that we're nuts. And why, why they think that you're crazy. Instead of taking aspirin, you ask for prayer. Different things like that. And we'll be sharing those things with you. Hebrews chapter 8. Excuse me. Chapter 11, verse 8. We'll start reading verse 8. By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out not knowing whither he went. Now you have to realize something. God just told Abraham to leave his family and the city where he was going and did not tell him where he was going just to simply walk out and take off. Now that's walking by faith. People not knowing where you want to go. Verse 9. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations whose builder and maker is God. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age. She was 80 years old, I believe, when she had that baby, or 90 years old, somewhere around there. Some of you ladies better watch out. Praise God. <laughs> because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore sprang there even of one and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. Verse 13. These all died in faith, not receiving, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded, and I want you to understand that word persuaded there, of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. And if you read in the New International Version, they'll say that they confessed that they were strangers and aliens. Hallelujah. On the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from which they came out, they might have had an opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country, that is, and heavenly. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. If you read in the New International Version, these people said they were strangers and aliens in a strange land. If you're born again and you know Jesus as your personal Savior, the reason people think you nuts because you're not of this planet. You're not of this world. You're just in the world, but you're not of it. That's why people say Pentecostal people are crazy because they act crazy. They act, they act dumb. They don't realize what well, most people, if you're a born-again person, you try to walk away from that sense knowledge or from the five senses which has been your teacher all your life. And people that are born again walk in the spirit in which Jesus said. He said, for many are led by the spirit of God. So when the spirit of God is ruling and reigning in your life and you by, by means walking and knowing but Jesus, 
Jesus Christ is Lord of your life, you're not of this planet. You are a complete alien. Now, there's many, there's a big phenomenon going on today about Star Wars, the, uh, what that name of that show, The Empire Strikes Back. Many people are really, you know, they're really interested in science fiction. They, I mean, one of the greatest TV shows that went across this country was Star Trek because it, it moved with people's imaginations. Well, people, that's how me and you are to the outside world. We not of this world. The Bible said we have become a new creature. Now, if you look that word up in the original Greek, it doesn't mean creature. It means a new species. That means there ain't nobody on the planet created like you. You are a completely different individual from another world. You are an alien. That's why they call you crazy. That's why they call you a nut. So you might as well live like a nut because they're calling you a nut. And the closer you get to God, the nuttier things you're going to do anyway. Whoever thought of coming to a church on Tuesday night when there's so many other things could happen. The reason you're here is because of the love of God that you have within your heart to hear his word ministered unto you. You see, that's why when people, they look at me, they think I'm crazy. When I go in hospitals and when I go in different things, you know, and the word of the Lord begins to come, we pray for people. We didn't see three people, I believe, today in a hospital, me and Brother Nelly. Now, it seemed kind of stupid that we held their hands and prayed for them inside the pit of unbelief. I call hospitals pits of unbelief. I do. There's nothing wrong with them. Jesus said there's divine health in the Bible. Now, there's nothing wrong with going to a doctor. Don't misunderstand me. I love doctors. Wouldn't have been for doctors. A lot of us have died. Praise God for doctors. And I believe God raises up doctors. What I'm saying is there is divine health in the Bible. If you want to walk in it, in it, you've got to live by faith. You've got to accept that divine health just like you accepted salvation by faith. I say nothing wrong with medicine. I'm just saying there's a better way. Sister Yvonne got a tooth filled, didn't cost her a dime. Didn't hurt. Just felt good. She had a doctor that came and made a house visit. You can go to the doctor. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying there's a better way. Now, when she gets up and says, the Lord filled my tooth. Somebody that don't know Jesus says, that woman is crazy. She has no sense. Then the reason they say that, because she is an alien. She is speaking an alien language because she's speaking by faith. The natural man receiveth not the things of God because they're foolishness to him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. The aliens are here, and it's us people. And we're taking the planet Earth. Because of the love of Jesus Christ that's ruling and reigning in our lives. I'm so glad today that revival's going on. That people are printing bumper stickers everywhere. You see Jesus' name all over the place. Man, I mean, we have in Washington for Jesus. Thousands and thousands of people are coming. And people are beginning to realize and know that there's such a person as Jesus as Christ living and ruling and reigning in the United States of America. Some people say America's going down. Well, no, it ain't going down. So many people say, well, I tell you what, it's falling. No, it ain't. God is using the United States of America to evangelize the world. 90% of all missionaries come out of the United States of America. That's why we're so blessed. Amen. We got a lot of things wrong with us. All God wants us to do is clean up our own ranks. See, Abraham took off. He realized that he was an alien. Totally different than the people in the city from which he left. He went out completely one of the dumbest things in the Bible I've ever read. God didn't tell him where it was going. He just took off. What would you do if it, well, you know what the people say right now? If all of us walked out of this church and just started walking down the road, we'd get some attention. Do you know that? Pretty soon we'd have ABC, NBC, and CBS coming out there. They'd say, there's a bunch of crazy people walking out of Darlene. And everybody coming and here they come. Can we get an interview? Yes, where are you going? I don't know. What you going to eat? I don't know. I don't know. Where you going to sleep? I don't know. Do you know anything? I don't know. The Lord told me to go. Oh, Lord, a bunch of Jesus freaks. That's what they're going to say when the rapture of the church comes. They're going to say them bunch of nuts went out in Phoenix, Arizona and got them a tent somewhere, stuck it up in the desert and worshiping God. They could care less about the rapture because that don't make no sense. The only way you're going to get up is in a 747, according to them. Hallelujah. But we'll have a Holy Ghost engine inside of us. 
And the Lord, I began to realize that. And Jesus said, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I said, God, I can't do that. He said, your own nature can't. But you're an alien, brother. You own a completely alienated world. So you've got the power from which you came. That recreated spirit that's in you comes from the throne of God, from the heavenly heavens, from the planet heaven where God Jehovah lives. He said, when you speak that word, that spirit that's within you will believe me. And that spirit's hand and my hand will interlink and will get people healed. The aliens are here. That's why they think you're crazy. When I got saved, I told a few Christians that I was saved. They thought I was crazy. They said, you can't be saved because they knew me like I once was. I said, hey, honey, get your fishing pole out of my past. Get your line out of my past, man. Hallelujah. I was so excited. I got to preach in my hometown for watch night service. I'm very seldom ever home. I, I got so excited about it. And I had a, a friend of mine, little did I realize, he was talking to this girl. He walks up this girl. Now, I used to know this girl when I was 17 years old. I was engaged to her. Now, this was not my wife. She knew the old Jesse, which was a bad, bad man. Alcoholic, drink like a fish. He said, you got to come where I'm going to now. She says, well, where are you going? She, that man says, I'm going to a revival and hearing a preacher preaching. I tell you, I, he said, God is ministering and blessing. He prayed for a bunch of people last night and they all fell out. And the lady said, he did. She said, yeah, and people were healed. God was touched and he's having a watch night service in Homer. You got to come see him. She said, he, she said, well, what's his name? He said, his name is Jesse the Planet. She said, who? She, he said, Jesse the planet. She said, what do he look like? I should have told him. I said, tell her he's good looking. <laughs> he said, well, he just looks, you know, just a regular guy. She said, Jesse the Plantis. And he had a picture of me in a newspaper. He said, this is the man. She goes, I know that rat. <laughs> she sure did, too. She did know the rat. But she don't know the recreated man. She's coming too. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, you got, you got to see something. You got to see something. God's done a marvelous work in this man's life. She says, it can't be. I know him, man. I was engaged at that bar for a year and a half. He drank like a fish and he loved every minute of it. She, he said, yeah. you know what he told her? He said, yeah, but he's drinking the new wine now. And he ain't getting drunk. He's just laying hands on people and they're getting healed and getting saved and getting touched and getting blessed. She says, I got to come see. He said, you got to come see. Or come here, you know, come see me. You know, well, you know what I mean. <laughs> Praise God. I can say that. I'm kind of close enough to my hometown <laughs> anyway. The aliens are here. We're seeking a country. We're waiting on the inevitable return of Jesus Christ, the rapture of the church, man. Everybody's standing around waiting. That's why everybody's so excited today, because they know that it's the end times are upon us, people. That's why in newspaper people, and all kinds, they say, man, these Christians are beginning to say this, that Jesus is coming. It's even causing the whole world to take notice. Why? Because of the excitement of the Holy Ghost that's about ready to suck us off this planet and put us in our new homes, people. The aliens are here, and it's us. We're ready. Hallelujah. I want to get everybody around me to come to my place. I've never lived in a mansion in my life. I'm going to brag about it for centuries. I'm right. You're going to see my house. I'm going to bring you down there. I can't wait till I get there. I understood Abraham. He said, man, I'm looking for a city whose foundation maker is God. He said, we're strangers and aliens, pilgrims here. We are not of this world. That's why they don't understand this people. Jesus expects us to believe. How do you become an alien? You must be born again. You must get an alien dose. A medicine that nobody understands. You can't see it, smell it, taste it, feel it, or touch it. But, and it gets in your veins. It comes out of your system. And it pushes cancer away. And heart attacks. And diabetes. And it pushes a dead nature down. And a new nature comes up completely created. You can't bottle it up. You can't make a serum out of it. All you do is speak it. And it works. 
Jesus expects us to believe the word of the Lord. Stand on his word. Just believe Jesus. When I got saved was in September of 1974 in a bathroom in Boston, Massachusetts. Long-haired, freaky, hippie-looking dude with a bunch of money in my pockets, but wasn't happy at all, man. I walked out of that bathroom. I went in as Jerry Jackson, the entertainer. I came back out as Jesse the plan as a recreated spirit man that belonged to the Heavenly Father. I walked out of that place completely different, new, didn't have a pew, didn't have an altar to kneel down, didn't have nothing. Just in front of a mirror said, God come into my life and the alienation, the alien became a new creature in Christ. I walked out the door. I told my wife she knew it had happened. My little girl said he must have got saved. And people, I became a new creature in Jesus. I became an alien. Everybody noticed it and I never told nobody that much. That first night, went back down to that nightclub, start playing my show, boy. My organ player kept looking at me across the stage as we were playing, doing that higher song. Do do ba do 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 da do all that kind of junk. And I'm just sitting there smiling. They said, they said, what's the matter with Jerry? I said, who's Jerry, Jack? You looking at Jesse, <laughs> the new created man. Ooh, they sensed it. Something had happened. I got so excited. I flew home this weekend before I came here. Left my equipment up. And I've been, the Lord been dealing with me about the group I once had. Which is the name of the group was the Las Vegas show group, Summerwine. And I met a, a friend of mine. And a, I'm thinking about having a Summerwine reunion. We worked together. These people were like family to us. We worked together for over four years. We were thrown together on the road for 40, well, 49 to 50 weeks out of a year. And they know I'm a preacher now. And I was thinking about that. And lo and behold, I got a long-distance phone call from Tucson, Arizona, Friday morning. Here's my drummer that worked with me. He said, how you doing, Jerry? I said, Jerry's gone. This is Jesse. He, I said, you need to beat Jesus, Jimmy. He said, you really believe that. I said, brother, I know. I want to tell you about my Lord. He said, I need somebody to help me, Jesse. I said, you found the right man. <laughs> He said, you sure talk different now? I said, yeah, man, because it's the Holy Spirit within me talking. He said, you sound strange. I said, I am strange, man. I'm not of this world. He said, oh, come on. I was blowing him away. I said, come see me, partner. Come on home. Come to my house. He said, you think God can save me? I said, yeah. What do you think he gave you the talent for to play drum? One of the best drummers you'll ever hear in your life. I said, he didn't give it to you to play in nightclubs and beat your brains out. I said, he gave it to you to glorify Jesus Christ, man. He said, you believe in what you're talking about? I said, yeah, man. I said, I'm an alien, man. He said, you are what? I said, you think Star Wars is bad? Wait till you get to my house. <laughs> Hallelujah. Why? Because Jesus is ruling and reigning in my life. Oh, I became a new creature. The aliens are here. And you know what? It's even disturbing politics, man. Oh, we got old McGovern going nuts, man. <laughs> yeah, we got all them old senators that we, got, we blew out of there. Man, people get scared. Why? They're beginning to notice the faction that Jesus is ruling and reigning in people's lives. And it's time to get this government cleaned up and let's go home for Jesus. Jesus knows what he's doing. The aliens are here, people, and it's us. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12, Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. We've received the spirit of God and not of this world whatsoever. You've got the life force, the Zoe creative God force, ruling and reigning and living in your spirit. And when you look across there under the anointing and the power of the Holy Ghost, you can command people to come out of wheelchairs and believe by faith and the devil's got to turn them loose. Why? Because the aliens are talking and when the aliens are talking, everybody's listening because they're not charging anybody to heal anyone. Jesus is here. And it's all Jesus. It's, it's his Lord. Our Lord, him. Jesus is fantastic. Thanks for listening to this powerful message by Jesse Duplantis. Remember to hit like, subscribe, and the notification bell in order to be up to date with all things Jesse Duplantis Ministries. For more information, visit our website at jdm.org. This media is copyrighted by Jesse Duplantis Ministries for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this media or of any pictures or accounts without Jesse Duplantis Ministries' consent is strictly prohibited.